Savante Myrick was nervous, he didn't show it, even though everything had changed overnight. That's me. Yes, it is. At just 24 years old, Myrick is the youngest mayor ever elected in the city of Ithaca, New York, a Democrat in a liberal college town. This is his first day on the job. This is weird. This is my, my office now. <laughs> Thank you. At his swearing in on January 1st, he certainly I'm sounded so, like a mayor. I'm so full of hope. Now he has to act like one. That's not what mayors do. <laughs> he admits his age was an issue in the campaign. He wore out two pairs of shoes, convincing voters he had enough experience for the job. Frankly, there's nothing you can tell people um, that will show them that you're ready to do it. All you can do is point to what you've done already. Done already? He's 24. But when Myrick ran for mayor, he already had more government experience than most of his opponents. When he was just a junior at Cornell University, he was elected to the Ithaca City Council. Now his portrait will be added to this wall in City Hall, and when his face goes up, it will stand out. If somebody told you growing up that you were going to be the mayor of a city of about 30,000 people... I wouldn't, I wouldn't believe him. Less than three years ago, Savante Myrick was a student on this campus, but being a Cornell Ivy League grad wasn't enough to impress a lot of Ithaca voters. What they liked was his life story. Do you remember being homeless? A couple of the times I remember. The earliest times I, I don't, I was too young. What's the visual in your head? The car. Um, being in the car and having everything you know, that we had. In those tough, turbulent early years, the family also spent some time living in shelters. He says his father, Jesse, had a serious drug addiction, and it was breaking the family apart. He was a crack addict? Yes. And, uh, and it cost him. You know, it cost him his health and his family. It cost us, you know, our stability. Myrick's grandparents rescued the family and moved them back home to the small town of Earlville, a one-stoplight town of 800 people in upstate New York. How many black families in Earlville? One. Your family? Yeah, my family, yeah. Our family was the black neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> Leslie Myrick worked multiple low-paying jobs to support her family. On the day we met her in Earlville, she'd worked the overnight shift at the front desk of a local hotel. There right. must be something special about this guy, that yeah, he's at that he's point. He's full of love, and he had, has always been full of love. Leslie taught all four of her children how to survive tough times. Her son simply calls her a superhero. She went above and beyond. I mean, she sacrificed everything. It sounds like you don't quite know how she did that. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. You, know. you thank her? Yeah, she won't take it, though. <laughs> she won't take it. It's funny. I, all she'll ever do is apologize for the things that she didn't do or couldn't do. It's like she, she doesn't know what she did. Um, she, she saved our lives, all of us. She saved our lives. You're going you're gonna to mess me up here on national TV. No, I'm good. No, just with the castle is fine. Growing up in a family that was always just scraping by shaped Myrick's political views. Supporting the local food kitchen is important to him. He says food stamps and the free lunch programs at school helped feed his family. I know that personally I would not be here um, were it not for these programs. Savante and his three siblings, Mikkel, Neith, and Shalita, all worked after-school jobs and pooled their money to keep the family afloat. This was the elementary school? Mm -hmm. Just certain grades, right? Yeah. Myrick took us to his old school, where one year he convinced the principal to hire him and his friend Steve to wash windows. So you cleaned every window in this every entire window. school? Yes, every window. For 50 cents a pane? Yep, Steve and I. Hmm. How old were you? About 12. 12, yeah. When he was in high school, Myrick's grandmother gave him a copy of Barack Obama's book, Dreams from My Father. And for another biracial kid struggling with his identity, growing up without his father, raised by a white mother, he saw himself in that story. I thought, well, if this, you know, guy with that name and those ears can do it, then a guy with this name and these ears can do it. Hi. You guys say hello to Mr. Hi. Mayor Svante Myrick. Hi. 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 
But it was someone closer by who really made Myrick think about his future, his high school teacher, Jonathan Sherry. Why did you push him? Because I saw from a young age what he was capable of. Myrick says he wasn't much of a student, but his SAT scores were nearly perfect. Mr. Sherry helped him apply to Cornell, and by the time Myrick was a high school senior, he was pretty confident. P.S. In 2040, when I'm president, <laughs> I'll keep you in mind for Secretary of Education. Oh, that that's not... right there. The new mayor still looks very much like a college student. In fact, he lives with roommates in a house just off campus. And they wouldn't mind if Mayor Myrick would keep the kitchen a little cleaner. He doesn't cook very much, but I know whose peanut butter spoons those are. I suspect he's still in my shaving cream. (laughs) Was that yours? (laughs) (laughs) And though it may look like a frat house, the young guys living here are surprisingly powerful. Under one roof is the mayor, a city council member, and a member of the county legislature. They jokingly call it the Hall of Justice. What is the Hall of Justice? If you ever see Super Friends, the old 70s cartoon, right. the Hanna-Barbera, and see Meanwhile back at the Hall of Justice. Meanwhile at the Hall of Justice. A self-confessed nerd, Myrick is a voracious reader and loves comic books. As for his social life... Do you have a girlfriend? Uh, no. You think it gets easier now that you're mayor to get a date? I don't know. Now I'm making you blush. All kidding aside, there are big challenges ahead. Like so many mayors, he's facing a shrinking budget and tough choices. At a time when government programs are being slashed, Myrick sees value in a government that worked for him. You've said that you're not self-made. No, that is not my story. I mean, this is not the story of a self-made man. This is, this is the story of a community that conspired together to raise, you know, a child. I mean, that is... That's the truth.